here we are, uh, back at Kerbal Space Program. It is re-entry day. We're going to be working with uh, the whole point of uh, getting this protosaur vehicle into space and into a low orbit. Really, it's just above re-entry at the moment. It was so that we could practice uh, re-entry and uh, do this over and over again, which reminds me, I need to do a quick save right at this moment. Because I'm treating this like a simulation, so I'm very likely we're going to be uh, reverting back to this quick save many times. In previous efforts, I mean, I have successfully re-entered space planes using the rescaled version, using deadly re-entry, but it's, I've always just guessed at it. I've always just come somewhere around over here and burned retrograde until it looked right. You know, just, just a best guess. And then I came down anywhere from like over here to even on this continent to somewhere, occasionally somewhere even close to Kerbal Space Center. I'm tired of guessing. Um, I did a little bit of prep work. We've got a flag set down here at the end of the runway at Kerbal Space Center. And just the, I'm going to use this as my target. One really annoying thing happens. If I set this, set as target. Look at this. What the hell is that? This triangular icon. I didn't ask for that. I'm not even entirely... I think that's probably some kind of crap that MechJeb is pulling that I didn't want, and I have to figure out how to disable it. The really irritating thing, besides putting this ugly icon on my map that I did not want, if I hover over it to find out what is my distance to target, it doesn't tell me. So this, not only is it ugly, it's actually less functional than stock. Thanks. Um, okay, so I went here and we got a... Uh, let me see, pull this up, uh, target. There, had to go and create a second window just to tell me how far away I am from the target. All right, I'll stop griping about that. So the plan is, uh, we're gonna start writing things down. If you wanna remember something, we're going to write it down. I'll tell you what, and uh, also in the past where I've, I've uh, just guessed at things. I've gone retrograde until I watch the path, until it comes and hits the surface and disappears at a certain point. We're not going to do that either. This, our first, our first test re-entry of this thing is going to burn retrograde for a 50 meters per second of delta B. I figure that any vehicle that I want to re-enter, I will budget uh, 100 meters, at least 100 meters per second of delta V for the actual re-entry itself, uh, for the re-entry burn. And so we'll start off just right in the middle of that range, 50 meters per second delta V, see if I need to adjust that number forward or backwards. And I want to do this burn about 90 degrees away. It's like gonna be really close to 6,000, maybe a little bit less. Let's actually, looking at this number here, let's call it 5,500. 5,500 kilometers. Okay, so yeah, we just want to burn 50, so we're going to take that down to what 94 meters per second, right whenever this hits 5,500. And coming up right about now. Take it down to 94. Just exactly like that. So let's see what that path looks like. Oh, it looks like it's just barely grazing. But it'll work. Okay. And okay, now we're going to do a nice gradual descent. I suppose I can go ahead and stage to get rid of... Yeah, get rid of our booster. Yeah, and there we are, just hitting at atmosphere. It's at like 91.8 kilometers. So, my plan is... I think we actually don't need to do joystick use just yet. I want to go for maximum braking right now. We're also going to try to fly pretty much the identical profile each time so that, you know, just trying to fly it identically so in in order in order to remove as many other variables as possible. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a look at this. I'm just going to leave that up there where I can ma monitor the temperature. Uh, most of the parts on these on these vehicles that are used like 
Uh, they have temperatures. Some of them are as low as 1100. Most of them are up there at 1500. I'm going to say that uh, 1000 degrees Celsius is, is my goal through this re-entry. I want to find the point where uh, we're, we're encountering 1000 degree temperatures and I want to manage the, the actual attitude of this thing and uh, manage my glide path to maintain that temperature and that way we will gradually slow down yeah there see we're already slowing down and we're just gonna yeah try to maintain this perfect 90 degrees up until the aerodynamic forces get strong enough that it can't hold that attitude and then we'll try we'll start like hand flying it Okay, let's get some hands on the controls here, guys. Whoops, things start get starting to get kind of crazy here. Whoops, 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 whoops. Come on. Let's not be doing wild rolls. Alright, some visual re-entry effects, but we're still not even up to not hot enough to boil water. We're actually going to start doing some S turns at this point because I can see our vertical speed is climbing up, and that is not what I want. But but I still want to be exerting as much drag as possible. There we go. There's a the stick is all the way back, so that's exerting maximum drag. Tell you what, now let's flip our S turn around the other direction. Temperature is gradually increasing. That's also okay. Here's our temperature approaching 500 and increasing faster. Let's see if we can catch... Oh, man, okay. Catch this rate of descent. Not... Because I want to have a manage... Yeah, let's try and cease S-turning. It's... I've, have, this is not being stable, guys. Okay, come on, guys. Okay, there's our rate of descent is coming up as our temperature going to peak around 800 degrees. I don't want to climb. That's not what I was going for. So let's allow the nose to come back down again. Yeah, this is being kind of exciting to fly. It's just barely controllable just barely oh I was forgetting that I had this on the precision control in the new mod let's actually let's turn that off and see what happens do I oh look at this look at what kind of control I get I actually yeah that's okay let's our, our temperature starting to get away from us let's come on guys get the nose above the horizon Let's catch that rate of descent. We're going to go blazing right past our 1,000 degree mark. Let's come on. Come on, airplane. Oh, man. No. Above the horizon. Let's Can we calm down right here? Thank you. Oh, there's 1,100. That's exciting. No, come on. Oh, that's severely uncommanded rolls right there may have again those ailerons maybe just too large or have too much too much roll authority there okay i'm thinking yeah that regardless of whether we get this thing down in one piece or not we're gonna reconfigure it bef before we launch another one to see if we can see if we can make it um, more controllable because I get moments where it's almost controllable and then there's moments where it's just it's it's rolling away now things are overheating uh, starting to oh man my, my temperature I was actually looking at was not above a thousand of course it's getting there now nose above the horizon guys let's try and catch that rate of descent okay there's now we can maintain an alt I thought we could. All right, now it's just totally getting away from me. Come on. Uh, I think we may be completely gone now. It's it's totally gone. This does not look recoverable at the moment. 
And the temperature. I can't hardly re can read. I can't read the thing at the moment. Okay, now we're be hitting the transonic range. And yeah, you can see as soon as it does that. I mean, yeah, sure, we still got a spin going, but it, it a lot. It just naturally, as soon as we started to get subsonic, it naturally lined the nose up into the wind. Okay, guys, now we're supersonic again in the dive. Okay, turn SAS back on. Can we pull back some? Let's pull a whole bunches of G's. There's six G's. It's slowing down again. Okay, and we'll allow it to go because we don't need that temperature mark anymore. Well, that was all kind of exciting, wasn't it? It is not at all what I wanted to see, but it was exciting. <laughs> I think maybe a large part of the issue is my ailerons, my, my elevons that I was using are just entirely too outsized but that's really that is one thing that I was kind of looking for I've so often had my control surfaces that have been not large enough and I deliberately see I was trying to see well, I wonder if I can make them just too large you know hey there we go Well, at least I can say I'm glad that there was not a Kerbal piloting that one. As that would have been a very terrible thing to do to a guy. Really, as time goes on, the letting Kerbals die, it seems to me to be a, a less and less acceptable thing. Uh, disappointing. Disappointing. I saw what, we, what so often happened with several of my designs and not, me, me not really understanding a whole bunch of this, you know, this hy hypersonic type uh, type behavior. Uh, that we started having some big yaw problems. We'll make these control surfaces about a third the size of the old ones. We'll do maybe a little bit slightly less dihedral than we had before. Okay, Protosaur, do we do Bravo, do we do two? Yeah, Protosaur Bravo. Yep, okay, Protosaur Bravo. Uh, I chose not to do the whole extended recording of the launch of this thing. We already know what that looks like. You notice this thing looks kind of like a, depending upon your angle, is either a shovel or an arrowhead. I don't know if that's relevant to anything. So they're gonna do the same thing again, and yeah, my my I'm gonna write down how close we get. <laughs> there we go, exactly fifty. Now I want to point this thing down. I'll tell you what, just so that the decoupling force doesn't change our delta v at all, we'll go decouple right then. Okay. And same story as before, and hopefully we'll see this thing be stable. This is one thing that I, whenever the the following vehicles in this whole series, we'll continue to do our small scale versions, just to experiment with the different wing shapes and you know the relation of the the wing shape to to our large control surfaces. Uh, you know, so we don't put all whole bunch of time into putting a, a larger, more capable vehicle only to find out that the wing shape won't work. It's got to be a different, uh, better way of displaying this. I mean, I know that in this here, in the nano gauges, that there is a way in flight to do, there's one of these is temperature, to, but I'm not certain what, man, grief, where even is it in all these gauges? A heat down here, but what is it measuring? At what point on the vehicle? I don't know. I need, I need to figure out that whole system. And something I could, I mean, it just occurred to me that I could play around with these things. Let me see, this is, that tells you where the drag is. Everywhere. Lift. Not much. I, I think the lift thing doesn't really work so well. Where's the stall? Everywhere. Okay, there's some visible, uh, yeah, vis visible re-entry effects. I, I could have worked on that if I wanted to know where it was. Let's actually, let's try that tint stall let's put let's leave that working for right now still trying to fight me in that role isn't it 
But, okay, now, there, that's something that's more stable. Okay, temperature approaching 500 degrees Celsius. We've got our lift vector is slightly above the horizon. This is going to begin to catch. I'm actually going to roll. Let's roll more wings level. Let's try to get more lift vector above the horizon. Try. Okay, and I can see that vertical speed. The needle is starting to come up. Because I want to catch this. There's temperatures go screaming right past 750 degrees. Okay. Yeah, we can catch this descent. Uh, we've got weird yawing motions going again. I do not like that at all. Okay, no, we don't want to climb. Let's do more S-turns. Let's not let this yaw getting away from me. This is... I don't understand enough about this supersonic, hypersonic flight to understand why it wants to start yawing away from me so much. No, I don't want to climb. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, calm this whole thing down. There's our descent again. And we're looking for 1,000 degrees. I want, you know, in an ideal world, ideally, I want to ride the 1,000 degree temperature curve all the way down. Yeah, that stall shader. I can't see it in the re-entry effect, so that's not really going to work so well, is it? Yeah, our pitch is okay, our roll is okay, yaw is all over the place. Maybe what I need to do... Oh, whoa, no, 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 okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. It's starting to get away from me there. And climbing again. Yeah, give it, give it some, not, not tail fins, but belly fins, something that, that'll hang down there in the relative wind. Uh, you notice that all these real space planes don't do that. Possible exception, the X core has got something kind of like that on the its two, uh, the end of its two winglet kind of structures. Uh, now we're the climbing again, but we got up to 1,100 degrees. But then they've, yeah, all, all these real life space planes in development. You see that they have these these special uh, heat, you know, the heat tiles. Uh, heat resistant materials all on the belly, which still, in, even at this point in, in modding Kerbal Space Program, we do not really have that system working for our space planes. Uh, pretty much our entire vehicle has the same heat resistance. And we're not really direction, we don't really have a, like a, a one, sur one side of a surface will be more heat resistant than the other, not as far as wings and fuselages go anyway. And roll it back the other direction. I'm trying to do these S-turns. Yeah, these relative velocity, you know, for the surface speed, these S-turns don't appreciably change our path over the ground, but what that, the whole purpose of that is to, so you're still pulling G's, you're still trying to slow down, uh, but with but you can point your lift vector away from the ground. Oh, wow, we're within, coming up on 500 kilometers away from Kerbal Space Center, still Mach 12.7. Try and not let that climb get too much. Yeah, here, I can, whoops, hang on, I looked away from the nav ball for just a second to say I could see Kerbal Space Center up there. The bird tried to get away from me. Still, the change that we made to the ailerons, I'd, I'd say that was a good change. I'm not certain if the, if the dihedral that I had on the wingtips, if that was a problem. But certainly the, you know, the, that initial design for the ailerons was a problem. Okay, getting too hot again. Hello, Kerbal Space Center, I see you. Think we could make the island runway? Probably not, since we're still over here just under Mach 11. Yeah, but this thing definitely needs more lateral stability. It's a common flaw in so many of my aircraft designs. It's the lack of lateral stability. I really... and I have lessons that I need to learn about them. I've needed to learn these lessons for a long time. And I just... I, I don't! I don't learn them. Yeah, this is becoming easier to manage. Oop, as soon as I say that, this thing breaks sideways. I shouldn't say stupid shit like that. 
All right, finally, we're below 1,000 degrees Celsius. So let's start to continue some of our S-turns and try to ride that 1,000 degree curve some more. Okay, yeah, so the, apparently, so what I'm seeing here... Yeah, okay, now we're coming up on two... Yeah, two Gs of acceleration. Got our equivalent airspeed above 200 meters per second and increasing. Yeah, once we get down below, say, about Mach 5, and the temperature stops being a real problem. Um, okay, now our equivalent airspeed is dropping again. That's good. Below Mach 3. Pretty soon we're going to be looking at subsonic. I can actually see monitoring that temperature. I just want to see... Yeah, I want to slow to subsonic and I want to see it be well-behaved, well-mannered while it does that. Okay, we're below Mach 0.8. Right in the middle of the ocean. Overshot by 1,100. Just over 1,100 kilometers. Oop, here we are going transonic again. All right, well, since that experiment is actually over, what happens if we turn that precision control off? And try this. Look at that. This thing is capable of pulling. It pulled up, what are there, like four Gs. Okay, there's our stall warning happening. The shaders are pretty nifty. I like them. Oop. Yeah, okay, we start getting some stalling and stuff, and like 70 meters per second. Equivalent airspeed. Oop, 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 oop. Yeah, she's letting me know she didn't like going that slow. Come on. All right. Oh, okay, okay, don't do that. Don't do that. No, I think it's gone. Okay, don't let this thing slow down below, say, 60. Well, actually, with 70 for safety's sake, that the uh, bad things happen. And, and, um, well, that's not ex not exactly a flat, well, it's flat-ish. Yeah, it's pretty flat Spanish, isn't it? All right, with no engine to thrust out of it. Pitch control isn't doing anything at all. This won't, yeah, roll won't do anything. Yeah, that's, I would consider this to be pretty well an, un, an unrecoverable flat spin. <laughs> but that, that was my fault for letting it get too slow. Oh, wait a second. Maybe did it just recover from its, on its own when I let go of the stick there? Is that what happened? Uh, it started to think about it. No, all right. well, I'll try that. I'll let go of the stick again. See what happens. And slows, slows, slows. Okay, now there's a chance. It's trying to. Whoop! All right. <laughs> oh, I like I like this stall visualization. The, the the shaders on it. That's very good. That is very very good. Okay, and we are under canopy. Okay, okay. This is definitely a step up. This is better than the previous version. I'm thinking just a simple, like a small, yeah, like even smaller than that one up top. Something that goes in the bottom because we think we think that uh, it'll have to be something that'll uh, be compatible with landing gear, so it can't extend too much. But just like a, a long strake on the bottom to try and give this thing some lateral stability, and we'll try that. Notice we can see where the level of the water is now. And that used to be a real solar system, but that was not the case. Uh, that's some strange behavior there, dudes. Okay, here's Protosaur Charlie. Uh, modified my original... At first I thought I was going to put a single uh, strake, what that's called, along the ventral surface of the fuselage, but then I remembered that eventually, with some of these vehicles I'm putting together, that I have uh, mapped out in my head, I'm going to want to use the ventral surface for other features. So instead, I split them up and put two of them. I'm going to put uh, on each side of the wing, made them small and, you know, small as I think I can get away with. Re remembering that this is going to have to interact with the landing gear is going to be down around in this area. And we don't want these things dragging on the ground at, on, upon landing. Uh, yeah, and this should give us some more lateral stability. 
Okay, we'll save that one. And again, I'm not interested in recording the entire launch and getting it uh, set into the 100 kilometer orbit. Okay, here we are coming up for, what is this, attempt number three. Getting the protosaur to re-enter. This time, what's the plan? Yeah, stills to the same distance from target, uh, still this, using the same meters, uh, amount of delta V. Uh, this time we've got strikes added and we've got going to be using regular control, not precision control. Do I have that set? Yes, I do. I already have that set. Well, at this point, let's go to joystick and rudder pedals. And... Yeah, let's see if we can pull some more G's. Whoops, 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 whoops. Oh, don't be flying tail first. Careful, careful, guys. Okay, well, we've demonstrated that um, our control, our elevator travel is capable of pushing it too far. This is an encouraging result to me. This means that I do have enough control travel that way. And so far, we're being much more controllable in yaw. And you can see we're pulling slightly more G's than we were before. Some of it's, you know, the instability. Some of it's pilot-induced oscillations. I'm trying to just kind of damp this out. I suppose I could be trying things with trim. I haven't done, I haven't touched trim at all in any access for this whole thing. Okay, maybe there, there would be value in using the nano gauges, using the alternate. <clears throat> oh, come on. I'm trying to talk here. Okay, okay, don't do that. Come on. Don't do that. Come on. Oh, come on. No, I think I, I don't think that was an instability of the aircraft. I think that was poor piloting on my part. Yeah, let's actually reload. Let's reload that quick save. Let's try this again and see. It's, it's, I'll attempt to just, you know, simply more careful piloting. Yeah, but I believe this time, let's actually make better use of our pitch trim to give us more control over the vehicle. I suppose I could do this trim change right now, just looking at this needle over here, just to kind of match that. Approaching 300 degrees Celsius. Okay, there's our... See the SAS, we're going to maximum control deflection. Let's actually... Let's Kill SAS at this point. No, 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 no. Caught it, caught it, caught it. Just barely. Just barely caught it. Okay. And come on. No. Okay. We're controllable. We're controllable here. Trim forward some. Or <clears throat> Looked over at that other gauge for a second. Okay, coming up. Yeah, they are going to approach right up here to 1,000 degrees. Okay, but there is nice and controllable. Let's ease on over into an S-turn this direction. Uh, we don't want to be doing this climb. Ease over, I said. Thank you. Okay, this is being more controllable. Doing smaller control moves than previously, but still... Um, whoop, whoop, looked away from the nav ball for a second. Climbing again, just a little bit of a climb. Okay, actually, actually, no, we managed that very well. Right at 1100, I would like to cool off a little bit more. But this is manageable. Definitely have a better handle on the pilot-induced oscillations this time, so I feel happy about that. Although we're approaching 1100 degrees again. Come on, guys. Which, okay, so under the larger goal of learning to aim this re-entry, um, I suppose I could restart this but I also want to practice I want to see this thing be controllable all the way down to the surface 
And again, I was, see, I was thinking that I wanted to try to be to be slowing down more. See, we're still got we're pulling less than one G. Oh, we're starting to get hot again too. But that is a less important goal than keeping it controllable. I thought I'd try a thing. I actually took my hand off the control and the trim actually flies at fairly decently. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's very, very likely that some of the problems I was just over over piloting it. Yeah, I think there's just that little bit of a change between 100 meters per second equivalent airspeed and around the 100, 120 makes a huge difference for the yaw control. It's The vehicle is much happier at 120. But unfortunately, that equivalent airspeed up at some of the, the higher Mach numbers, up at the higher altitude, makes things too hot. You can't just chase that equivalent airspeed all the time. Let's actually start ease forward on that pitch trim. So I don't because we'll, sooner or later, actually not too very long, we'll be hitting subsonic again. Uh, temperature concerns are over. I can get rid of that. I'm overshot by just over 1,500 kilometers. So the simple solution be to do our retrograde burn instead of at 5,500. You know, we'll add 15 to that and do it at what's what 7,000. Yeah, you can see how far those. Elevators travel. Um, yeah, and I ended up never using their full range. I think I don't want to shrink the elevators any. I like how large they are, but we might uh, reduce their total control travel. I think they're at the maximum of 30 degrees. We might want to tune that down to about 25 degrees. So I end up not using all of the, all of the travel that they're capable of. I gotta be honest, I never, I haven't figured out what this gauge is supposed to be. I mean, the vertical speed is easy to understand. And, and this, and this, the, the, the nano gauges, vertical speed, this is superior to this dial up here. It's more precise. It has more numbers to look at, more individual uh, gradations. But I haven't figured out what the other one, this is supposed to be vertical velocity indicator. Now, yeah, now we've overshot by 1,600. I mean, the other thing that I can do is to do our initial retrograde burn uh, to do it for more than 50 meters per second, maybe bump that up to 75 meters per second and see what kind of a change that makes. Yeah, definitely, I, want, I probably want to change only one of those variables at a time. Could try a different wing design, giving it as see as, as successful as these strakes were. There's this other wing design, like the like the X core, the the Lynx, where they they do the they do the, like the winglets. They have like the uh, vertical stabilizer both on the underside and larger on the top. And they you know instead of having the single rudder in the middle, they put them out in the wing tips, which is an attractive idea. Um, about time we need to start thinking about this. Um, because I do like the the notion of ta of taking all unnecessary stuff off of the central fuselage so that I have more room for other stuff. Whoop, let go of the controls. There we go. That one's done. The thing is, but in the past when I've tried that style of, of wing design of putting you know big vertical surfaces at the wing tips uh, it's ended up being very very uncontrollable it's bits it, the thing they it snaps over to 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 it give the uncommanded roll and stays there and you can't correct it and it's apparently there's something about that wing shape that I'm not understanding and I need to figure it out Okay, so let's, let's see, what, what were the changes that I wanted to make? I want to uh, change elevator, reduce elevator travel.
Okay, there it is. Oh, I'm getting tired. It's, it's, it, take, it takes like a half hour each time. I, would, I need to figure out a way to kind of expedite the process. It's, and it's, and it's a kind of draining. You have to pay such careful attention. Okay, but yeah, we'll keep on working on this problem. I think maybe we're not going to record like every every little bit of, of doing this. Maybe I'll, I'll I'll maybe I'll say that the next episode I'll I'll try to come back whenever I actually do have the 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 protosaurs problems fixed and working and it's behaving as it should. We'll try and do a quick demonstration of that and then move on to getting the next vehicle in the series, one that'll actually be large enough to to be useful. I don't uh, probably yeah, yeah, okay, we'll do the, the, the one manned, one single Kerbal manned version after that. Okay, it's been fun. I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.